If you don't want to pay $1,300 to get a hitch installed, then you've come to the right place because we are going to show you how to install EcoHitch. So why would you actually install an aftermarket hitch? The answer is pretty simple. If you go with Tesla at the shop, tesla.com, you're going to pay about $1,300. But if you add it during configuration, it's actually $1,000. So that makes it really worth it. The value of getting it through Tesla is going to be two things. It's going to be tow mode, trailer mode, which is kind of, I guess, one thing. But what that means is you have the turn signal. If you are pulling something, you'll get the turn signal activated. When you do install the aftermarket hitch, you actually need to get another aftermarket part to make the blinkers work. And then on top of that, the tow mode or the trailer mode, all of that is going to be a software update, which most of us won't have access to because you need the Tesla toolbox to push that update into the car. So that's kind of why if you are planning on pulling with your Model Y, you know, trailers or camper, stuff like that, then I would highly recommend getting the Tesla hitch. It's a little bit more money, but you don't have to do anything. And it has all of it. It's an all inclusive package. But if you are like me, I don't really pull anything with my Y. I do go take my bikes out. So I have a one up bike rack that I have on the X. I can switch back and forth, then this is probably for you because the hitches go around like three, more like 400 range to 500. So let's get started. It'll help us a lot if you click on the subscribe button because we're trying to do a lot more how-to videos so you can do a lot more do-yourself projects. So click on the subscribe and the little bell button. So let's move along. The first step is going to be removing this bracket right here. And the reason why you need to do that is because it's, on, it's in the way. So we're going to go grab the electric ratchet right here. And this is going to be a 10 millimeter. Okay, here, just loosen it up. You got one right here, two. All right, and you got three and the outer one right here and four. Make sure in the last one, just hold it. There you go. So this bracket right here is just held by this clips right here and then also on both sides. Um, you could remove this, but it can be a little difficult. So I would just leave it on and just don't drop it. Just kind of let it sit just like that. It's not really pulling and there's also a bracket right here. So this is what we call the crash bar um, on the back. It's held by three 15 millimeter bolts and you do need, a, need an extender. I'm going to go ahead and put that through. And right, let's go ahead and remove all this. Just so you guys know, this is actually 38 pounds. It's not that heavy. Um, so you don't need that much force. As you notice, I didn't have to put as much. Uh, that's going to be the spec that we're going to tighten this back up. All right, so let's go ahead and do the other side. All right, so once I got to this point, what I'll probably do is I like just taking it out. It's loose already, and I'm just gonna hand handheld and just remove it. So now that we have the three bolts on each side removed, we're also going to be taking it out. There's three more bolts on each side, just like that. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Once you get to the last one, just hold it through. Just hold it because it will fall. Although it is held to that, it's gonna, because of the weight distribution right here, it's gonna wanna fall. So just hold it against the car and you'll be good. All right, let's go ahead and remove this crash bar. Just like that. This is actually the passenger side and this is only for the passenger side. 
and there is actually a 13 millimeter, right? So you're gonna go ahead and grab either a ratchet or electric ratchet or whatever you have. And let's go ahead and remove this. And for this process, you actually don't need these. So don't worry about it. We're gonna go ahead and remove these bra brackets right here. Just like that. That's the top. There's a lot of the dirt there. We're gonna grab the hitch, a little heavy, just like that, okay? So we got both of them here. We're gonna lay it down and the way it's gonna work is just like it was like that. It's gonna go into the same holes like that, okay? So we also got the factory nuts and you're gonna be using that to tie in it to this. And this is gonna be 38 pounds of torque. So I would recommend getting something like this where you could set your settings. This is already at 38, you can lock it and then you get the exact torque that you need. Uh, and that can be very important. So I do like to be a little bit more accurate. I got my extension. Let's go ahead. Um, before we use this, it's a lot easier to just tighten it with the tool. I just like to squeeze this too, just like this until it's kind of tighter. And then as you're holding it, just screw it in. And just a tip, I'm not gonna time this really hard right now, mainly because I wanna make sure that that side is also adjusted. So hold off on actually putting it into the torque specs. Go ahead and grab the other nuts. So I have this pretty much um, on the hitch itself, but just keep in mind, um, I did have to loosen it because I forgot that I needed to put, remember that bolt that we put on the passenger side that we have to remove? We do have another bolt that they provide it is an M24 or a 13 millimeter bolt like this. So what we're gonna do is put it on its bed like this, I guess on its belly. So we have a spacer right here that goes underneath to bridge that gap. And then go ahead and you can just hand tighten it. And again, I like putting it like this, just so I put less stress and it doesn't pull it down. You're just kind of using gravity to do its thing. All right, so this should be good. It's flush now. And now that that's good, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and go ahead and tie in these again. 38, so I have it set, locked. Let's go ahead and put this back. Awesome. So before we put this on, we have everything ready to go. Uh, we're gonna explain to you a very, very important step. Uh, they provide nylon washers and there is a reason for that, but I'm not a mechanic. I don't know that much about all this stuff, but our neighbors do, and this is how with Quick Everest Gar Garage, and he's a master with, so he's gonna kind of explain to you exactly what's going on with these. Put steel to aluminum, you're gonna have co corrosion. So you don't wanna have the corrosion through electrolysis. So they give you a nylon washer to put in between it. So it's not metal to metal contact. So you don't have to worry about any corrosion to where the stuff just basically sticks itself together. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna keep it from damaging the back of your car, damaging the studs, mm -hmm. the threads, and just keep everything nice on your. Yeah, if they EV. don't have this, what, what did you say you can use instead you can, of these? If you don't have these, you can use dielectric grease yeah. and a regular, like a zinc washer. Right. Cause, uh, Basically, the zinc will corrode before the rest of the metal. Right. So it's like a, what, an anoid? Yeah. I think is what yeah. they call it. So the zinc acts as an anoid and pulls the, yeah. the corrosion towards it. If we're pulling something and putting a lot more strain, yes. would you recommend using this nylon? I would not. Now, because would you use if you're I would use the stuff? zinc washers with yeah. um, dielectric grease. Yeah. Because if you put this in between the metal here and you're pulling a trailer right. and it's rocking, it's actually going to smush this it's continuously. It's going to wear out, right? And it will eventually have a play in it. Yeah, and, and we'll put some pictures up here um, of like older S's that have like corrosion. It like turns green pretty much. Yes. And it goes like all the way up and it looks nasty. And what happens if like it corroded? Like, can you fix it? What's the step? You can, but you're gonna have to actually go in there and basically cut that out of the metal. Not yeah. cut it out, but you'll have to grind it yeah. or something like that because once it's just like, it's a cancer. 
Yeah. So once it's in the metal, it's just going to keep going. It's just aluminum's version of rust. Yeah, yeah. So it's just going to keep eating into it. So this little step is going to save you a lot of money later down the line. A lot of money and time. Yeah. A lot of money and time, for Sweet. sure. Thanks, Hal. Hey, no problem, brother. Appreciate it. So hopefully that was really helpful from Hal. Uh, very, very good explanation. Uh, in the instructions, what you want to do is put one washer and then two washer on the outer one. And we're going to be doing the same thing for the other side. One washer in the inner and then two on the outer. I'm not going to be pulling anything really with this. I'm literally going to be putting it on like bikes and stuff. So this is going to be fine for me. But like Hal said, if you are planning on pulling, grab yourself some zinc um, and the grease. Uh, and that should be a much better option for you. So now that we have this set, I'm going to go ahead and try to center it. It's on this table. I'm going to grab it from the middle and just try to make Guyver it in. Oh, sorry for grunts. It's heavy. All right, so I got it in now. Awesome. So I'm just making sure that everything is centered. Okay, that's good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push it in and go ahead and grab some of your nuts. And we're gonna go ahead and start tightening it. I'm gonna start with the top one, just like that. This is the same thing, this is 38 pounds. So let's go ahead. So we have this thing torqued to 38 pounds and it is solid. I mean, it ain't moving and it's moving the whole car pretty much. So once this is good, I will check the center just one more time so it didn't shift. It looks really good. That looks centered to me. I'm going to go ahead and put this back. And this one's fairly easy to put back. There's a little clip right there, a little clip right here. This stays right here, and then you got your bolts. Please do not over tighten this. Uh, it's very easy to. This is just a, pl a plastic bracket. So again, do not over tighten it at all. We're just going to hand tighten all these. And since this is... 10 millimeter, just like that. As long as it's not dangling, that's what you're looking for. The hitch installation is pretty much done. All you need to do is put back the bumper and just reverse it. We have that video, so refer to that. The main thing I will remind you though, and we say it in the video as well, is don't forget this. This is gonna suck if you forget to connect this. So connect that first line it up and then put the bumper back. We're gonna speed it up. We'll see you after you put your bumper back. All right, so got the final bolts on. Just look around, making sure that you don't have anything loose. Once you get back, the bumper um, installed again. What you do want to do is just close this and just check that it closes. The number one reason why this wouldn't close when you do put a bumper back is the seal. It's not in all the way. You got to put a lot more force. If there are some adhesive, that's okay. You can use something like Goo Gone or an adhesive remover and that should come right off, but you should be good to go. So now we're going to go ahead and close this and we have the hitch installed. And this is called the Eco Hitch by Torque Lift. And they do give you uh, like a, I guess, attachment for this, but I prefer, I don't open it that much. And I will have a one up on this. Um, so I'm not really worried about this cover. But if for those of you who are removing this in and out, you can use these this tools. This is a tow hitch cover remover that we sell in our shop. And it comes in two like this it's, it's aluminum. And you go from the top right here and you just put it through and then you just bring it out just like that. It comes right out. Boom. And once you do that, you can pull this out if this doesn't come out. There you go. And look at that. You got this hitch right here. Now you can put your receiver, you can put your bike rack. So this is ready to go. If you're not using it, you can just put this back on and to put it back on, you just kind of slide it from the bottom 
line it up. And then after that, it's going to go above those. And there you go. That pretty much sums up the install of the hitch. This is an eco hitch. Hope this helped you guys. Again, if it helped you, please hit that subscribe button and that bell button so you could stay up to date with all our new videos. But until then, happy towing or racking or whatever you do with your hitch. See you later.